Welcome everybody to our time of evening prayer on Monday the 15th of February. As always we begin our evening prayer with our prayers of preparation. O God make speeds to save us, O Lord make haste to help us. Blessed are you Lord God creator of day and night, to you be praise and glory for ever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts, set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. There are two psalms appointed for this evening prayer, Psalm number 47 and Psalm number 49. So we begin with Psalm number 47. Clap your hands together, all you peoples, or sing to the Lord with shouts of joy. For the Lord most high is to be feared, he is the great king over all the earth. He subdued the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He has chosen our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a merry noise, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. Oh, sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with all your skill. God reigns over the nations. God has taken his seat upon his holy throne. The nobles of the peoples are gathered together with the people of the God of Abraham. For the powers of the earth belong to God, and he is very highly exalted. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And next we have Psalm number 49. Hear this, all you peoples, listen, all you that dwell in the world, you of low or high degree, both rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a parable, I will unfold my riddle with a liar. Why should I fear in evil days when the malice of my foe surrounds me, such as trust in their go goods and glory in the abundance of their riches? For no one can indeed ransom another or pay to God the price of deliverance. To ransom a soul is too costly. There is no price one could pay for it. So that they might live forever and never see the grave. For we see that the wise die also, while the foolish and ignorant they perish and leave their riches to others. Their tomb is in their home forever, their dwelling through all generations. Though they call their lands after their own names, those who have honour but lack understanding are like the beasts that perish. Such is the way of those who boast in themselves, the end of those who delight in their own words. Like a flock of sheep, they are destined to die. Death is their shepherd. They go down straight to the pit. Their beauty shall waste away, and their land of the dead shall be their dwelling. But God shall ransom my soul. From the grasp of death, he will take me. Be not afraid if some grow rich, and the glory of their house increases. For they will carry nothing away when they die, nor will their glory follow them after. Though they count themselves happy while they live and praise you for your success, they shall enter the company of their ancestors, who will never more see the light. Who will have honour, but lack those who have honour but lack understanding are like the beasts that perish. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 37, verses 1 to 11. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived, as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zippah, Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of other of his children 
because he was the son of his old age, and he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his other brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Once Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, Listen to this dream that I dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright, when your sheaths gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brother said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us? Are you indeed to have dominion over us? So they hated him even more because of his dreams and his words. He had another dream and told it to his brother, saying, Look, I have had another dream. The sun, the moon and the eleven stars were bowing down to me. But when he told it to his father and to his brothers, his father rebuked him and said to him, What kind of dream is this that you have had? Shall we indeed come, I and your mother and your brothers, and bow to the ground before you? So his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Here ends our first reading. And our canticle, a song of God's grace. The glorious grace of God is freely bestowed on us in the beloved. Blessed are you, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for you have blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You chose us to be yours in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before you. In love, you destined us for adoption as your children through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of your will. To the praise of your glorious grace, which you freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In you we have redemption through the blood of Christ, the forgiveness of our sins, according to the riches of your grace, which you have lavished upon us. You have made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of your will, according to your purpose, which you set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The glorious grace of God is freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. Our second reading comes from Galatians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle, sent neither by human commission nor from human authorities, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the members of God's family who are with me, to the churches of Galatia. Grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to set us free from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory for ever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you into the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another gospel, but there are some who are confusing you and want to prevent the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should proclaim to you a gospel contrary to what we proclaimed to you, let that one be accursed. As we have said before, so now I repeat, if anyone proclaims to you a gospel contrary to what you received, let that one be accursed. Am I now seeking human approval or God's approval? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still pleasing people, I would not be a servant of Christ. For I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that we proclaimed by me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. You have heard, no doubt, of my earlier life in Judaism, I was violently persecuting the church of God and was trying to destroy it. I advanced in Judaism beyond many among my people of the same age, for I was far more zealous for the traditions of my ancestors. But when God, who had set me apart before I was born and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me so that I may proclaim him among the Gentiles, I did not confer with any human being. Nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were already apostles before me, but I went away at once into Arabia, and afterwards I returned to Damascus. Then, after three years, I did go up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas, and stayed with him for fifteen days. 
but I did not see any other apostle except James the Lord's brother. In what I am writing to you before God, I do not lie. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was still unknown by sight to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard it said, the one who formerly was persecuting us is now proclaiming the faith he once tried to destroy, and they glorified God because of me. Here ends our second reading and our responsory. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. And the Magnificat. My spirit rejoices in you, O God. My soul proclaims your greatness. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly, he has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. My spirit rejoices in you, O God. My soul proclaims your greatness. And so let us pray for the church and for all the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. We pray to the Lord in faith, we pray. We pray to you, our God, that the rest of this day may be holy, peaceful and full of your presence. In faith, we pray. We pray to you, our God that the work we have done and the people we have met today may bring us closer to you. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God, that we may hear and respond to your call to peace and justice. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God, that you will sustain the faith and hope of those who are lonely, oppressed and anxious. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God, that you will strengthen us in your service and fill our hearts with longing for your kingdom. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God. In our worldwide calendar of prayer today, we pray for the Diocese of South Ancoli in the Church of the Province of Uganda. And in our own diocesan calendar of prayer, we continue this month to pray for the Allen Mission Area and for Paul Edgower, their Mission Area Leader. For Archdeacon John, Archdeacon of Wrexham, and for Gregory, our Bishop, for all his ministry for and among us. We pray for all those known to us who are in need of our prayers at this time. Those who have asked us to pray for them, and those who have nobody to pray for them. We remember before God, Colin and all people in nursing and residential homes. For Daniel and all people in prisons and for their families, finding it extremely difficult to see their loved ones at this time. We pray for the invaluable work of our local chaplains here in Wrexham and nationally. We pray for Alan and the chaplaincy team at HMP Berwyn, and for Jane and the chaplaincy team at the Myla Hospital. We pray for those known to us who are sick at this time, for Sue, Richard, Tim, Louise, Derek, Joanne, Mo, Betty, Malcolm, Charlotte, Mal, Edwin, Gordon, James, Margaret, Sophie and Anne. We pray for those who are bereaved at this time. 
for Sharon and Peter and their family, for Mark and his family, for Barbara and her family, and for Kath, Katie, Mike and Helen and their family. And Lord, we remember those recently departed, among them Glyn, Cynthia, Philip and Sarah. Finally, Lord, we remember all those people involved in the COVID vaccination programme, be it in administration of the vaccine, development and production of the vaccine, or research teams researching new vaccines. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And so let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.